I'm from San Francisco. I was born here, I've lived and worked here. This is where I feel at home. But I'm not the first to say that this city and the state of California has gone through a whirlwind of issues. 7,200 Californians moving to the Boise area. Nearly 700,000 people yes. left the state last year. California has been losing more residents than it gained. So where are Californians moving to? Over the last several years, and especially accelerated because of COVID-19, thousands of Californians are leaving to find more space, less business regulation, and a more affordable cost of living. With more and more people looking to relocate out of state and even out of country, there has been an increasingly growing interest to move to Montana. I just spent one month living in Kalispell, Montana, and today we're going to take a look at what it's like living in Montana to show you a comparison of the cost of living. Before we get into that, and while we're on the topic of relocating, I'm excited to announce that Omaze is sponsoring this video to offer you a chance to win a month in the European city of your choice to live like a local. They give away insane prizes that are basically dream come true experiences all while helping charities. For this prize, you get to spend a month on a curated trip to the European city of your choice where you can live with a friend. You'll get a fully furnished apartment, a luxury concierge service, and a lifestyle manager to help you plan your trip. And if that's not enough, you'll get a $30,000 travel budget with an extra $10,000 in spending money. Yeah, I wasn't kidding. This is like a dream come true. Taxes are included and every donation supports the work of Quintessentially Foundation UK, which is an organization that aims to improve education, health, and welfare for disadvantaged communities and individuals in the United Kingdom. If you go to omaze.com slash Haley, you can enter to win this amazing one month trip in any European city. And even if you don't win, you're still helping people in need. Okay guys, I'm just saying, maybe we can work out a deal informally here. If any of you win, I'm right now volunteering myself as your plus one. I'll take your photos, we can vlog together and just dive deep into the European culture of art and food, history. Sounds good? All right, where do you wanna go? Now you can see See on this map. So if you take a look at my scratch map right here, this is where I've been and this is where I want to go. But don't worry, I'm flexible. I'm open to anything. This is about you, not me. Just kidding, guys. You don't have to take me. But this is a dream trip and I really hope that each of you goes and enters for the chance to win. Best of luck and let's jump back into my relocation to Montana. About a month ago, I decided to pack up my bags and set off on a road trip across America. I made stops in each state driving through Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, finally making my way into the southwest area of Montana where I drove through the entire state, stopping in various cities on my way to Kalispell. Here is where I stayed in a three bedroom house at the base of the Flathead National Forest. This house is a third generation's cedar wood cabin built by the hands of a loggers family who were also my neighbors and still lived and worked on the property. I was tucked away on five acres of land at the end of a country road surrounded by Northwest Montana's best, pine forests, frozen lakes, and a whole lot of space. The house came with modern appliances, two bathrooms, a deck and patio, in-unit washer and dryer, which is always a huge bonus coming from a metropolitan city like San Francisco, along with plenty of space indoors and outdoors being on five acres and so much surrounding areas to hike and roam around. The cost for all of this, $2,600 a month. Coming out here to Montana has been an incredible change of pace. I felt isolated in a forest with the mountains as our backdrop and personally, I enjoy that feeling. Kalispell has been named one of the fastest growing cities in Montana, and it's no wonder people are moving to the valley. Kalispell is nestled in the Flathead Valley of Montana. And the reason why I chose this place to settle for a month is because of many reasons, actually. It's the gateway to Glacier National Park, Flathead Lake. It has unlimited trails for hiking and riding, all of the outdoor activities you could imagine, and outstanding arts, culture, and history. Transportation in Montana is super simple. You get around in your car. I will always encourage public transit and alternate options, but we are still in the middle of the pandemic, so those options are not as available 
And we're talking about Montana here. It's mostly rural. The roads are not built for high volume traffic and infrastructure is not what it is in a metro area in terms of taxis and ride sharing apps. The cost of gas when I was there in March cost about $2.50 a gallon and that's about a dollar less than it costs in the San Francisco Bay Area. Downtown Kalispell wasn't too far from where I was staying. I would go to the grocery store a couple times a week, but I still had to plan that out during my work hours because it was a 25 minute drive one way. On the weekends was when I did most of my exploring around the valley. I hiked Glacier National Park on a perfectly sunny day. I took a guided horseback riding tour through the snowy mountains. I made my way around town trying some of Montana's most iconic cuisines, and I went on a lot of drives around Flathead Lake. I also visited Whitefish for a weekend. Also, just in general, the way of living in a more rural area is going to cost less overall since you are more isolated and you might have to drive longer distances to get somewhere. It does require a bit more planning and better time management when those conveniences aren't right outside your door. So I moved into an area called North Beach. It's a lively neighborhood in San Francisco that is also known as Little Italy. It's centrally located in walking distance of pretty much everything. The financial district, the Embarcadero, Chinatown, views of the Golden Gate Bridge, and a ton of bars, restaurants, coffee shops, and parks. Welcome to my apartment in San Francisco. Let me give you a quick tour. Of all the times I've moved back into San Francisco, whether that's renting or subletting, I think this is the sixth apartment I've moved back into in San Francisco or, or stayed for a while. This has been my favorite one because there is so much natural light the ceilings are really high, the appliances are modern, and it's in a very centralized location. For a one and a half bedroom, one bath, in a centralized area of San Francisco, with all of these amenities in just in this apartment alone, this apartment costs $3,000 a month, and that's not including utilities. So with utilities, it's about 3,200 a month. However, I got really lucky subletting this apartment for one month because my friend, actually lives here. She's just gone for the next two months. So she is subletting it out to me for half the price. So that's why I can afford this place for this month. I think apartments like this in 2021 are now going for anywhere between 4,000 to 4,500 a month with all these amenities and the location in San Francisco. I got pretty lucky subletting this apartment with in-unit laundry, especially because during the pandemic, most everything in San Francisco has been closed. So clearly living in Montana gets you more space, more land and bang for your buck than does living in a majorly populated area like the Bay Area in California. In terms of business opportunities, California has some of the highest top income tax rate that tops out at 13.3%. It's already an expensive place to work and operate a business and the tax rates continue to go up and get even more complex. For entrepreneurs, there's so much red tape that it takes about two years just to get a small business up and running because ongoing compliance and reporting gets really costly. While there are tax incentives for doing business in California, companies are finding that all of the other living expenses are outweighing the benefits. Montana, on the other hand, welcomes small businesses with a ton of resources for new business owners. Buying office space is some of the lowest in the country because there's so much land, which reduces the overall price of doing business. There is also a variety of growth incentives for new businesses. Here's the interesting thing though. I pulled up Smart Asset Income Tax Calculator and compared an annual income of $50,000 in Kalispell, Montana versus an annual income of $50,000 in San Francisco, California. According to the numbers, if you're making 50K a year in San Francisco with a marginal tax rate of 6%, you're taking home more than you would if you were in the Flathead Valley at a state income tax rate of 6.9%. So states tend to stack their taxes in different ways. And at the end of the day, each state has got to make money from their taxes. Since there is 0% sales tax in Montana, your dollar is going further in Montana, whereas in California, the sales tax is 7.25%. And even in San Francisco, there's an additional city sales tax added on. So at the end of the day, your pocket has around the same amount of money, but since labor and goods are also cheaper and there's no sales tax, in Montana, you have about a 10 to 15% in total savings. Unfortunately, what's going on in Montana right now is the influx of people from all over the country moving into Montana 
and buying property there is leading to issues like increased costs. That growth is also making housing prices higher at a rate that is outpacing Montana's average household income, which understandably makes it hell for the people who are normal Montana wage earners. And it's not just happening in the urban areas of Montana, it's also hitting smaller communities. Our requirements and understanding towards life have really changed in the last year, with the pandemic really pushing people to focus on what's important to them. Companies are letting people work from home and people like the idea of living in areas like Montana where there's more elbow room, less congestion. But either way, quality of life is centralized no matter where you decide to live. And when you're deciding on where to live, there are gonna be other factors that you'll wanna look into depending on your own needs. I loved staying in Montana. I loved getting to explore the valley. I met and became friends with Montanaans who I will share memories for the rest of our lives. And I would definitely recommend visiting or even relocating to Montana. But if you do decide to relocate to Montana or anywhere temporarily or permanently, the idea is not not to uplift or outcast a certain style of living. It's about approaching different ways of thinking and questioning yourself about what kind of living you prefer. And most importantly, how you can contribute to that community in a positive way. Whatever lifestyle you prefer, your basic requirements are going to be the same, but it is our responsibility to inherit knowledge and share that knowledge so we can continue learning from each other and respecting each other's choice of living. That's it for this video, guys. Please let me know what you think in the comments below about how you feel between living in California or living in Montana. And if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe because I will continue updating this series as I continue taking on the world.